Welcome back YouTube. Uh, sorry for cutting that last video a little short. I had something like two hours of raw footage of just shooting the inside of that door. Um, I kind of felt that two hours is a little ridiculous for a video. So I cropped it down as best I could. There's still a whole lot of content left to go ahead and get thrown into another video. In today's video, you're gonna see uh, all the work that it's gonna take to get the surface of the doors and the hood um, prepared and some of the scratches and dents and things filled in. And it's the next morning. Um, the temperature didn't really get as cold as it was supposed to get, which is awesome. Um, same time everybody warned me it was gonna get really cold and mildly disappointed that it's like only in the 40s right now. So while it's still not an ideal temperature to be painting a truck, um, we do have all the heaters on right now in here to uh, try and get it warmed up. Um, it's pretty comfortable already, but comfortable and paint curing temperature are slightly different. Um, so we're gonna give, uh, give the heaters some time to work. Um, and while the heaters are warming up the shop, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the door out of the way and do some work on the front tier um, so that we can get the front tier moved up to where the door is. Um, so I'll bring you along for that shortly. With the truck in the final location, I think where it's gonna be, um, there's enough room right here for me to uh, walk through while spraying the hood. Um, I don't wanna to be too close to the door because then it's tighter for me to walk through and uh, I might restrict some of the airflow that the fans are gonna try and pull out. So I want a little bit of space, but I also don't wanna be so far that way that the two heaters, the three heaters that we have um, can't keep it kind of warm around the truck once the paint's on there and once the paint has to harden and cure. Um, if I push it all the way to the back over there, then um, Obviously, we're going to have to heat up this whole side and let the heat kind of radiate that way, and it's just going to take forever. So it's easier to just bring it up towards the heaters. Um, so, like I said, we're going to be doing, without a doubt, we're doing that back door right there. Um, there you go. Without a doubt, we're doing that back door. We're doing this fender. Um, probably highly likely doing the hood as well. Um, so I do need to bag up the truck in order to paint those sections of the truck. So instead of unbagging and getting another bag and doing things, all I'm gonna do is um, just take a razor blade and I'm gonna cut pretty much right where all the panels are um, that I need to work on and paint. And then I'll go ahead and remove that bag. And then whatever bag remains, there's gonna be some excess. Um, we'll just adjust the bag as needed and tape the bag down to the vehicle and then do all the rest of the bagging or all the rest of the taping off and masking and things you usually do for painting. Um, it'll make a little more sense in, in a little bit once, once it's all cut apart and torn down and, and taped up. Um, it, it'll make more sense. But um, So I'm gonna set you up on a time lapse for that and I'll be back in a minute. Uh, given that my father-in-law does a lot of uh, construction work and is on and off job sites at various different locations, um, some some things, you know, kind of like this scratch right here and this scratch, and it had to be expected because 
there's rocks and just stuff all over the place around there that can get kicked up and thrown at your vehicle. Um, one of the things that I did not expect, and I probably should have, um, while cleaning this, let's see if we can get you over here. Right, so you can see in the wheel well, see all this white spatter? And it's all over the fender and along the whole bottom of the truck. So, my best guess at this point is street paint. Like the white lines that they put on the roads before the housing community's done or before the street's done. I think he might have ran some over and splattered it everywhere. So, because we are going to be blending color onto this panel and then clearing this panel, um, I, I do need to do something about these. Like, I, I don't know. I could leave them here and just paint over them and now he has a lovely textured paint on the bottom. Um, but then if, you know, at any point in time in the future he decides to actually try and get the paint remover stuff out and remove it throughout the rest of his vehicle, then, you know, the rest of it's going to be nice and smooth like up here, and this is going to be textured. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to try and grab some of that um, cleaner and degreaser, not degreaser, but some of that cleaner. Uh, I don't want to go with the paint strippers, but I want to see if I can't get some of this white to dissolve off of this. Um, so at least this is back to being smooth again. And, you know, if he wants to have the textured look later, that's, that's something else we can do with later. Um, but I'll go ahead and try and see if I can't get this clean before we paint it.
Uh, one thing that I didn't mention earlier when I was covering everything, um, you'll see that the door handle goes in here uh, and it's all taped up. Um, and I currently do not have any of the hardware. You can see the mirror's missing. Um, entire window's taped up. Um, I don't have any of the hardware in the door right now. Um, so what we did to get the door uh, closed, so I got you on the inside here now. Uh, we used um, bungee cord wrapped around the door near the top uh, attached to the gear selector uh, to pull some top tension on the top of the door, or at least the, the middle section of the door, not the actual top, but the middle. Um, and then just a uh, ratchet strap around the steering wheel to hook down to the bottom of the door and pull the bottom of the door in um, so we can get that good seal on it. Um, then we'll go ahead and spray the whole door, let it all harden, um, and then I'll put all the hardware inside of it and the latches and everything. So I don't know if it came out in any of the time-lapse footage, uh, but I did have a little bit of an incident uh, with this sprayer right here. Um, so box clearly says it's a water sprayer and this one right here that I have water in it, um, doing phenomenal, zero problems with the water guy. Um, <laughs> this one, uh, this one I have a surface prep solution it's basically a uh, de-waxer, de-greaser, um, chemically strips the panels of, um, you know, any of the waxes and oils and things that are on the panel. Um, so because I didn't, didn't bother to do my research beforehand, I just bought a single-handed water sprayer. Um, we ran into a problem with this guy where this O-ring right here... Um, absolutely got destroyed inside this housing inside of that housing um, sits this piston um, and when you pull the rod up the piston moves up and the piston moves down um, that's what creates the pressure inside of the bottle um, so this little piston here on the end this plastic piston um, that o-ring actually goes inside of it right here in this little gap and the piston and the o-ring line up with the inside diameter of this tube um, and then a little one-way valve down here and um, sucks up the fluid pressurizes the fluid um, so because i'm using a kind of corrosive chemical agent um, this plastic has just melted and kind of turned into goo um, so because of that it no longer builds pressure no longer holds pressure um, and the bottle itself already had pressure in it when this melted so a lot of the chemical that was inside of the bottle right here uh just kind of ejected out of the top and all over the place and made a huge mess so no fault on the bottle um the bottle 100 percent does exactly what it's supposed to and was an amazing bottle i just didn't pay attention to the fact that i put a kind of corrosive chemical inside of a plastic bottle that handles water so lesson learned there by the proper uh proper sprayer for the proper chemical you're spraying. All right, so I'm gonna apologize now. Uh, at some point, the GoPro stopped recording and I honestly wasn't paying attention. Um, having my dad here um, and working at the speeds that a professional <laughs> works at, um, I was more focused on helping him and doing what we needed to do with him to get this in the condition that it's in right now that you can see. Um, I was not paying attention to the GoPro at all. So I apologize on that. Um, so to catch you up with where we're at, so the doors were sanded with uh, 600 
um, so that they'll go ahead and be ready for the minimal color and clear that's going to go on them. Um, the new door needs to still be sealed um, and then color and clear, same process that we did on the inside, just on the outside now. Um, the temperature in here right now, I think it's perfectly fine and I shot the inside of the door in it, um, but um, my dad's not really comfortable with the quantity that we need to spray given the current temperature. Uh, he thinks that's a little too cold in here for everything to harden appropriately. So that way, as we get all the layers on it, that everything will cure correctly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hold off for a few days till it warms back up here in Florida um, and then do all of this painting. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, but the front fender here, um, there were two little marks here. I don't know if I showed them earlier or not. Um, some little dents and scratches from who knows what. Um, those went ahead and got taken care of. Um, the hood was stone chipped like you expect from pretty much every vehicle. Um, just completely thrashed in the front end. So we went ahead and sanded down, um, filled in, and smoothed out whatever we needed to um, so that we can paint the, uh, the hood as well and get all those stone chips taken care of for, uh, for Todd so it doesn't rust through. Um, the entire thing, if you'll notice, has a nice little um, like flat finish to it. Um, so it's been sanded down to 600 in most areas. Um, some areas you might be able to see some scratches in them over here. Um, that's where we had some additional filler that we put in to just cover some additional stone chips. Um, but I still got a 600 out. Um, but um, you know, this area down here and then the area all across the front, um, this is all acid etch primered. Um, so I need to actually knock all of that down before we can paint it. Um, but given the temperature right now, the acid etch primer is taking a little while to cure. Um, so I'm actually not going to be touching any more of this today. We're gonna let this harden for the next couple days. Um, and then I'll come back and, and go ahead and knock it all down um, and get it ready for actual paint. Um, you can see the entire truck uh, is taped up, bagged up, uh, pretty much ready to be sprayed. And I'll take you around to the other side so you can, uh, you can see what that looks like as well. So nothing really impressive over here because we're not, uh, not doing anything over here. All right, so that's where we're going to wrap up today's video. Um, thanks for watching. Go ahead and like the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and then throw some comments down below if you got any feedback for me on this. Thanks for watching.